Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fully Supported and this is our second episode so enjoy. Uh, and I know last week we talked about stop auto supporting and do it yourself but this week I'm going to show you why your auto supports absolutely stink. <laughs> if you're using lychee slicer. They just don't work that great. They're either too concentrated if you turn the thing up too much and then honestly, honestly it's just going to be too concentrated in areas you don't want it to be. Um, or it's not concentrated enough, as you'll see here, how sparsely it produces the supports on Mario and Luigi here. Doesn't even, I mean, I, do you see, I don't even see many supports on their feet. It's terrible. That's the bottom. So, we're going to take this and we're going to fix it. And I'm going to also explain a little bit of why I think the auto-supporting just doesn't work that great. So... As we kind of go up here through the slices, you'll see we haven't done the islands yet. I'll do that a bit later and we'll edit that out because honestly it's just a pain to wait for the process to finish. But as I go up here through the layers, you're just going to see there's barely any supports on the feet. You've got like one support starting each couple of, you know, bits of material there. You've got... I mean, it's just so much bare space. And Mario and Luigi here are fairly decently sized models, hollow or not. Because I don't think Lychee knows they're hollow anymore, given the fact that the little um, icon next to their object on the menu there is solid. Because I have now made them, you know, I made them hollow and I've cut the holes out. So Lychee doesn't differentiate between that and a solid object. In fact, if I go to auto and then I choose internal only, it, it, it doesn't actually apply supports anymore. It doesn't seem to work as well. Um, again, because I don't, I think the program thinks it's no longer a hollow object. Um, I think that Lychee does it best to try to support the object in the areas where it thinks it's going to, I guess, just need the most support tips. Um... On normal, it does not apply enough. Um, on the higher settings from normal, high, I believe, um, I forget what the highest one's called. I, I don't know if it's higher concentrated or something like that, but there's a setting where it's really clustered. Even that one, it's still so chaotic about how it seems to place its supporting. It doesn't follow any practices that I would follow. Like, it's not creating a ring, it's not creating a border, it's not following a shape, uh, it's not infilling the area in between the supports very well, it's just randomly kind of placing supports where it thinks it needs it. Maybe it's focusing on all the areas that are overhangs first and just putting a couple supports in each overhang. That wouldn't be good enough either. Um, I mean, look at this piece right here. Those supports are all kind of off center and the way it starts, in my opinion, that's not way not enough supporting um, for this foot. And you'll see just when I'm done with the backs and the fronts, or sorry, not the back of the front, the parts of these feet that make contact with the supporting first, you'll see how thick that I'm going to have these supporting bits done versus how it was when we just did the auto supporting um, button. Now, I have actually used other programs, auto-supporting. I have played around with Tango and Chi2Box, and they actually do auto-supporting a lot differently. Chi2Box actually seems to handle auto-supporting pretty well, regardless of hollowing or not. And in the five test runs that I did, uh, four out of the five actually succeeded printing and were just fine. Um, the fifth one might have actually been my error because I went and tweaked some things. I don't know. And I don't use Chi2 box as much. Might have actually been some of my mistake. But the other prints came out just fine. Um, so we'll call it user error maybe. The other program I played around with a little bit, you guys may be familiar, is a program called Tango made by Voxel Dance. Um, and as I said in the last episode of Fully Supported, we are planning an episodic series about that software. 
Um, only because I, I, not that I've expended everything about lychee, my goodness, no. Um, it's because honestly, I want to talk about something else. I want to put a little more diversity in the software that we're using. So Tingo does their thing based on the size mass of the object. Its program tries to think, all right, how much does it weigh? And where do I need to balance the weight? Um, and for the most part, the, we did seven tests and five out of the seven tests on the prints that we ran off came, came out fine. No problems. Um, so not perfect either. But to say five out of seven, um, that I, I'll take that. And I'll even take the G2 box percentage as well. They, that's two good numbers in my opinion. They worked really well. Now, I, keep, I won't say that Light Cheese Laser's auto-supporting option has never worked for me. It has. Um, if I use really heavy support tips, um, like let's say I'll, I'll use, the, like this, this, let's say these models, for example, if I were to go heavy and use everything heavy and hollow it and just click auto-support and do my island checks, I am pretty sure that it would survive. To what quality, I don't know. Would I have like warping or weird issues? Maybe. Um, would parts of it pancake or fail? Maybe. Would the supports do a lot more damage because they'd be deeper? They'd be penetrating the model deeper? Yes, definitely. Um, so those are all things that you have to consider when you start working on a, on a support uh, plan. So when I usually go in for a support plan, my goal is to put all the damage on the bottom if I can, I'll put it on the feet. If the feet aren't big enough, I will try to position on anything that is small enough or, or low enough and unnoticeable. Keys, um, seam places, like places where there are seams between model parts. Um, those are going to be the places that I look to put um, my supports because those are going to be the areas you're not going to care so much if you're doing the work. You know, okay, I don't need to sand. I, I don't really care. I'm just going to sand this flat and smooth just so they fit well. And then you don't really have to worry about the finesse. Um, while we move up the rest of the model, still here, most of these supports you're looking at are the auto supports. Um, the feet, of course, obviously, they're, they're good now. You know, we've got nice, chunky supports on their feet, so they're good. Um, there's some bit in the middle of the model there where the middle of their pants are going to start to form towards the center um, that I will need to support. There's going to be a little bit of an overhang. Um, then they're going to have a little bit of an overhang with their hair and their hat. Um, the bit part of the bottom of the pants there is going to have a tiny bit of an overhang. It's not too crazy. Um, also, the brim of the hat has a heavy overhang as well because it's going to be um, level uh, parallel and level to the plate. So I will need to put some supporting around that. They're going to look like they're surrounded in supports. But trust me, I always check everything for proximity to make sure that nothing is touching. So we shouldn't have any support sticking to Mario or Luigi's noses. Um, but yeah, as we move up the model, pretty much what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do my usual routine of just checking to make sure that these shells and overhangs are supported well enough. I'm going to take a look at where the auto supports already are. And then we're going to work around them. I'm going to use the support painter a lot because the support painter is pretty intelligent, whereas it can tell and it will not place supports too close to another support. So if I'm doing a routine or painting on a little area of supports, it's going to avoid areas on the model that are already supported around it. So it's a really good way for me to be able to do it without having to worry about being too finessey and not worrying about too much about where my actual shape is for my support structure. This particular supporting I am doing for myself, so I don't really care if it looks pretty or not. That doesn't matter to me. The most important thing, honestly, is making sure these come out with very little damage and they come out easy and quick. So as long as I can accomplish those goals, we are in good shape. Um, so like I said, my goal is to make sure that I have the island supported and we have all these overhangs looked at and supported as well. And so far, um, as, as you can see, we're going up the model. It's not too bad. Like 
once you support the feet and you get those big areas at the bottom supported, I think the only thing you really have to worry about is just making sure that your islands are adequate, adequately supported as you go up. And you may have to deepen and thicken some of the support structures on the upper areas of the model or even put in some medium supports as you start to get to the taller areas of the model. Um, light supports start to become a little wobbly. Um, somewhere between 75 and 100 millimeters at my, at least the size that I'm currently using. So um, you may need to switch to a slightly thicker support or you may want to consider using more bracings at that higher level if that is what is happening for you. Um, so that is something to think about if you need to make sure that you need more um, stability. Um, bracing is always good for stability check and you can use um, auto bracing. I don't have a problem with auto bracing. Uh, if you want to create your own braces, go ahead. Um, I honestly openly prefer to just use the quick click of the auto bracing button um, because it saves you time and for the most part they work pretty well. I don't really have much of an issue with that. Uh, if you use your proximity checks, you will you can make sure that the auto bracing didn't punch any holes through the model or anything like that. So there are ways to make sure um, that you can avoid uh, some of the tragedies that people do find with the auto bracing issue because I've had that too where you'll create an auto brace and the auto brace will actually take the tip of a support and fire it straight through um, the model to try to connect to another piece on the other side of a hollow bit and again this might have something to do with the way that Lychee sees hollow versus not hollow versus a, a, a piece of geometry that they've hollowed in application and then it's been left in application versus you um, cutting the holes out or, or re-importing an STL that is already hollowed. I think it actually behaves a bit differently with each one of those. Um, and I think that might be uh, part of the issue as to what, what, why you might have a problem like that um, on hollow models and why hollow modeling can sometimes be a little bit problematic depending on the slicer you're using. Um, and I don't really love some of the other applications like you can do hollowing in 3D, uh, Microsoft 3D Builder, and I don't really love it because it makes all these jagged bits on the inside. It's not as smooth. Um, the hollowing in Leachy Slicer has gotten pretty good now. They let you cut holes, they let you pull the caps out, um, and they let you keep the caps. Like, it's very good as far as that goes. The uh, hollowing in Chi2 Box actually works really well too. Um, I actually prefer that a little bit more I played around with it a bit. It, it's a it's a bit nicer because it's just hollow and you just cut the holes out and it just cuts the holes out and the program recognizes that it is hollow and yeah, there's yeah, it's 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 just it's different. Um I have not messed around with hollowing in any other program so far. Uh no, actually that's not true. I've messed around with it in Tango. Um and that that works okay. Um, it even looks like you might even have a way to create uh, other things in Tango too, like keys and stuff like that. Like you might have ways to split the model. Uh, I have to experiment with that a bit more, to be honest, to figure out if that is the case. Um, but it does look like there's a lot to it. There's some, some very cool aspects to the program, and I'm looking into digging into that as well. Um, but as you see here with Mr. Mario, his big nose... It's only got what? Maybe two? I think it's got one support on it. So that's a lot of material there that's going to pull in a circular pattern. And yes, it is going to drain into the head because it's hollow. But it's still going to pull a decent amount. So I think adding a couple extra supports on there will help give it a better shape. And I don't, you know, again, this is just one of the things why auto supports don't, they don't do everything, they don't catch everything. The hat is another thing. It puts, I think, maybe two or three supports on the hat. I think we wind up adding a bunch more on either side. And let me tell you, the prints have already come off. I've already printed these guys. They look phenomenal. The print, the supports came off really easy. I'm going to have a short coming out in a couple of days that will demonstrate the support removal for some of these. Um, we also have a Princess Peach. And I'm working on supporting a Bowser uh, that we will be... Um, printing out as well um, and all of these pieces are the printed obsessions work and very 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 talented artists love all the stuff they do 
Um, if anyone is interested, by the way, and they are in the South Florida area, we are actually going to be at a vendor booth at the uh, West Palm Beach UltraCon at the Palm Beach Convention Center uh, between August 25th and 27th. We will be at booth 1190. Uh, it's printmymini.com. You'll see the big banner and me wearing my colorful shirt um, with our logo on it. So come on over, say hi. Uh, you might even get something if you mention the channel. Um, like I said, August 25th through the 27th, um, we will be there, booth number 1190. I hope to see some of you folks there. Anyway, we're going to do the comparison here. You're going to get to see the difference between what we just did. Look at all these supports on here, how well we supported those feet. I want to flash back to the old footage here, and you're going to see. Oh, there we go. That's it. That's all the auto support does. So you can see why I say your auto support stinks. Anyway, folks, I really appreciate you guys watching. As always, please don't forget to leave us comments about the episodes and anything you want to hear in the future. And um, I hope to see you all again soon. Take care. Thank you.